Bill Skilton, and he's going to tie. A Helgramite, swimming Helgramite. And basically, okay, here we go. Basically, you use any hook size you have. You can use a wide gap, narrow gap, long shank, short shank, uh, depending if you're fishing for steelhead, trout, smallmouth, largemouth. Whatever hooks you have will work. And I'm using 3 aught unithread, use whatever thread you like. I'm going to tie a black heldermite, and the 3 aught allows me to use fewer turns and secure the material uh, well on the hook and secure it quickly. So let's just put some thread on the hook and let's run it right down the shank. Let's cover the shank and trim your excess. And then let's put some lead wire. On the hook shank, you want to fish this fly deep in most cases, and the diameter of the lead wire is immaterial. Put your lead wire on the hook shank. Keep it nice and tight. And I usually run it the whole length of the hook shank. Um, you certainly can add another row of lead if you like, but definitely get it get it on the hook shank good and tight and then let's run some thread over it just a couple of times up and down and now we're going to actually put the material on and I'm going to start off tying the tail and the body and we're going to use what I call woolly bugger marabou chenille and I dye this in about 30 colors and it comes in a couple of different forms this is an extra fluffy and it comes in what I call a regular. This is sparse but when wrapped on the hook it, it creates a nice body. This is very dense for larger flies. This is about a size six or eight long shank probably a 4x hook. So I'm going to use my extra fluffy. You could actually mix colors. I could add a purple or a blue or an olive and add that right to the fly. We're going to start out, just clear a little of the fuzz off of one end, and let's start back here, and just secure it on with five or six turns. It's on, we're good, I tied it on right behind the lead. I left an area back here to tie products on, and an area behind the eye to tie the materials off. Now we're going to spin this, we're going to ferrule it. Six or eight good turns, I don't know how well you can see that. I'll raise it up a little bit. And when I release the pressure, it will want to furl. It will want to curl up for me. So I'll release the pressure. There's my tail. There it is. I'll hold this. I'll pinch it with my thumb and index finger and hold the material. And then I'll make a turn. And then three or four turns. And then lay the material back over the tail and five or six turns to secure everything, tighten it. So we basically filled this area in. We'll run the thread up and I'll stop directly where I visualize my wing case starting. I stop there. I'm gonna wrap this material up to where I'm gonna tie my wing case on. So I'm gonna basically be tying a large nymph at this point in time. We're going to fluff this up just a little bit and we're gonna clockwise it one turn in front of the other. Stroke the material back just a little bit. Don't just wrap it. Stroke it. That fluffs up the material. And again, I stop where my turn of thread is, right there. One turn. I keep the bobbin in my right hand. I don't take my bobbin and flop it over with my left hand and let it bounce around. Keep it a few turns. Pull everything back. And we have now tied our tail and our body on. We're going to put a wing case on. We're going to take a piece of what's called stretchy foam. And this is about two millimeters, about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And it's melted on both sides. Most of my foams are uh, somehow customized. I'm not using a basic craft foam here. I'm going to take this material and cut it and I'm going to stretch the material slowly. And I always say a 200 pound man can tear this material. I can tear it. You'll be able to tear it. Be gentle and soft. 
there it is. You can take this material, you can stretch it out further, depending on how wide you make your cut, you're going to be able to stretch it out. It's going to be narrower when it's stretched. It's now paper thin. Okay? We're only going to need about this much, so let's cut this off right here. This piece we're going to make pinchers out of, and we'll come up to this here in just a minute or two. This piece we'll use for the wing case and the head. And you can, just to give you a view there, we're going to lay it on here, flat. We're going to make a turn and just catch the end and snug it in. I'm pulling back towards my chin, back towards my chest. I don't wrap around and down, or this material will roll around for you, or any material will do that. So stroke it back, secure that in. It's laying flat. It's horizontal, right with the hook shank. There's our wing case. There's our head. This little area here, we're going to we're going to cover with chenille and with our leg material. I could put five or six more turns on right now and go back there, but it would basically be a waste of time because we're actually going to tie another piece of material in. This is called woolly bugger hackle. And this is about three quarters of an inch long and we're going to tie this in right on the hook shank right there. Right in front of our wing case and now we're going to go stroke all of our material back and we're going to put those five or six turns on everything. Not just the wing case. We... And now we're going to run right up to behind the eye. I'm not going to spend time and trim these little spots. We're going to cover those up. We're going to run our chenille up, and again, we stroke it gently, fluff it up a little bit. Five or six turns. Doesn't have to be wrapped real dense. The denser you make it, the slower this fly sinks. So keep it nice and fluffy. And we're going to tie it off here. Again, in my right hand, I come around like this and tie it off. I don't flop it over with my left hand. Keep the bobbin in your right hand. I don't now trim this. I pull it back like this. I stroke everything back. You see how clean the eye became. Stroke it back. A couple of two turns. And now I trim it. Now we're going to wrap our leg material. Four or five turns. It's your fly, make as many turns as you want. If you want a buggy, put five or six turns. We're good to go. Stroke it back. Don't take your left hand and drop it like that. You have no tension, everything starts releasing. Keep it in your right hand. I hold it on the thread down here, not way up here like this. I hold it on the thread so when I can retrieve thread quickly and control it. And I swoop under here and I let go of this material and I re-grip it. And then I release it all together. It's secure. A couple of turns. Again, don't trim that. Stroke it back. Pull everything back. A couple of three, four turns and we're up on our material. And now trim it. Now we need to make our pinchers. So we take a piece of the stretchy foam and you remember at the beginning, I cut a piece off. So let's take that piece and let's trim and make our pinchers, our claws. And what I like to do is take my scissors and put it right against the middle of my finger, of my middle finger. And then I'm, I can steer my scissors and I can trim this. I'm going to try to hold it up so you all can see it here. And I do a half a moon in the center to the left, and I do a half a moon to the right, and I remove that little piece, and that's what I have right there. And you can spend as much time as you want on this and make it as pretty as you want. I don't think the fish care. I'm now going to trim this. There's one cut. There's two cuts. That side's done. There's two cuts, this is done. So now I make a cut here, and I make a cut there. And I'm now gonna remove this piece. And that's gonna be our pinchers. I'd suggest you take a little sheet of paper and just practice this. And it, once you do five or six of them, it's gonna be a piece of cake for you. This has been stretched, it's paper thin. It's not gonna try to float this fly or anything.
we're going to take this and lay it flat on top of the hook shank. Make one soft turn, hold it, and pull towards your chin. And then secure it with five or six turns. Remember my thread, it was up on the material, and that gives me a nice clean eye under here. If your thread creeps down to the eye, you'll cover the eye with your pincher. So make sure you're up on that foundation where we tied all the material off. And then trim that off. You can see that thread slid down a little bit when I turned it there to look at it. So let's just tie that on again. Let's lay it up there. A soft turn, pull towards your chin, and secure it. Okay, we're good. Now we're going to fold this over, and instead of just tying a wing case, we're going to cut this longer, and we're going to cut the corners off. So you have much more there than you need. And all we're going to do, we're going to roll it under like this. And what we're going to do is form our wing case and our head all at one time. We're going to do that by putting our scissors in here and rotating our wrist and laying it down. And I cut these corners because if I didn't, and I fold it under like this, and I start to maneuver it, those corners will protrude from your wing case. It may bother you, it may not. It's not going to bother the fish, but if you cut your corners, I think you'll be more happy with the results. Put your finger in, rotate a little bit, lay it down. If you tie any fibers down, it's not the end of the world. You can always pick them out later. Lay it down. Come around for the head and snug it up. There's your wing case, and there's your head with one or two turns of thread. Snug it up. You only need about three turns of thread with three-aught thread. Raise the pinchers and come underneath a couple of turns, and then whip finish four or five turns under your pinchers. Snug it up. Bring your scissors in, trim it. There's your pinchers. They can be wide, they can be closer together. It's your fly, you make it however you want. Your pinchers can be longer, the tail can be longer. As I said at the beginning, you can add two pieces of yarn and you can make a multi-color. And don't be afraid to try colors like blue and purple because small mouth and large mouth love the other colors. Orange, purple, blue, olive. Don't just think black. Black is a good color, certainly. Here's olive and black, much longer one, smaller pinchers. It's your fly. You decide the length of your tail. You decide the length and the width of your wing case, your pinchers, and head. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome.